when you're a top talent uh, in a sport or two or even three on this occasion, you're always going to be profiled, put in the limelight, uh, criticised, praised. Today on Sporting Denver, we have uh, a courageous young man involved and excelling in many sports that has chosen to come back to the United States, a brave decision to play American football. Tyrese Johnson Fisher, welcome to Sporting Endeavour, mate, and uh, thanks for getting across yeah. London in all the traffic, mate. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Thank you for having me. Uh, pleasure, mate. Uh, what what you just been doing recently over the last couple of months, mate, to uh, keep yourself fit? Yeah, well, it's just been it's been crazy, really, because. I was gearing up to basically go out to the States in about two days, but everything's changed now. Sure. I was, you know, I've been literally training four or five times a week in North London, South London, basically all over, and just basically making the most out of a bad situation and just trying to keep myself fit, trying to get better, trying to study the game, learn the game, be a student of the game. So I've just been so active um, on the field and off the field, really. Yeah. Um... I know it would have been this weekend, mate, that uh, you were coming over and, uh, you know, we touched yeah. base a few times. Uh, can, you, can you let all our followers and listeners know, mate, the, uh, the college and uh, whereabouts in the States you were going? Yeah, I was looking to go to Garden City. Um, so it's a junior college in Kansas. But now that, you know, the league's basically been moved to next year, I'm looking to go out in like about January rather than in a couple of days. What... Uh, what position uh, have you been recruited for at that college, mate? Yeah, I'm a running back. I was playing some D1 ball a couple of years ago, so I left Coastal Carolina in the southeast coast. Um, so I left there about last year, but I was playing running back there, and I'll be playing running back again. So, yeah, just get myself nice and ready. So, so it's a brave decision to come back, my friend, and I've seen you on lots of tapes, and... Uh... You look pretty good to me. You've been my team, Tyrese. Anyway, uh, I, I, I think you're right, right, right across the board, mate. Uh, so, uh, can, can you let you know uh, everybody know the you know your first experience and when you you know when you came over here to uh, Coastal? Yeah, well, I think when I went to Coastal, that was my third time going to the US because basically, I guess it's funny because a couple of months prior, I yeah. went to an All Star game. And I basically, you know, I played with some of the best players in America. I was top 100 players in America. And, you know, we played a game called the Unrobot America game. You know, we it was on ESPN and it was literally just a crazy experience. So to go yeah. from there and basically being with some of the country's best and being in a full time like college football, college football environment was just a complete nuance to me because I've never really been involved in American football because I obviously been playing other sports before so literally going over I, f I was a little bit nervous because of course you know being new to the sport was something that I was basically kind of nervous about but I guess it just had to go in with a really positive mind open mind and say to myself you know what I've been given an opportunity for a reason so I may as well use those nerves and use them as fuel really and basically use that to try and be the best of what I do so you uh you, you came over here did, did you have to sort of was it like oh uh got to learn the rules real quick i know what i can do give me the ball i'll rub with it was it that sort of scenario tyrese yeah you know, just yeah. trying to get that mate yeah no literally i because the thing is even though i when I first came over i had an idea about the sport i was still very much new to it so everything was still a nuance to me so I was you know, certain term and a bit of terminology in the game of, of football, American football, that was kind of similar to rugby, but a different meaning. It's like I'm on the field getting so confused because I'd played when I was in England, I was I was playing American football, but at least like training, but I wasn't in a full time setup, a full time environment doing it. Right. So be in a full time environment and literally have all these different words being thrown at you all day, every day, it was just like it was so overwhelming. But I guess it forced me to work harder off the field to really, really study and spend a lot of time in the classroom just trying to learn the sport because at the end of the day, 
So I wanted to get to the NFL and the only person that can help me get there is myself. So I had to put in the work and I felt as if I did for, you know, when I was obviously playing in Costa Carolina. Balancing the two sports together, you know, people uh, out there, uh, sporting fans, what? Playing actually at that, that, that high level in college, and obviously we'll touch on the rugby later, balancing those two sports together, is there anything in there, and I'm going to come from the other direction, is there anything in there, even though the ball looks the same, it's a bit bigger, uh, you run with it, uh, you get to the end zone or to score a try, is there anything in there that was completely threw you out of sync, thinking, oh, these are pretty similar, was, what, was there a, an issue in there? Mm. You know what? I think the moment that the moments that I found them similar were the moments that I ended up not actually learning football or getting better at it. Because the thing is, even though you look at them, they're both quite football sports, they both involve, you know, like an oval sized ball, they right. are so different especially with like the way you hold each ball, the way, you know, in, in rugby you're looking to obviously pass it as well as as well as do like kick it and other sorts of things you can do with the ball. But football, it's literally just wrapping the ball up and just trying to get as many yards as you can. So I think the thing is, the moment that I realised how different they were was the moment I actually excelled in my game because then I was thinking, OK, they're different, so I can't play on the football field like a rugby player because all that's going to do is get me into bad habits, gets me into bad habits, and then I'm on the field looking like a bit of an idiot. So I think the, the more I found the opportunity, the, the more I learned, the more I realised how different they were and the more I actually got better from it. So the finer technical detail of it, you know, would be, uh, yeah. you, you know, you get the ball, you've got to carry it differently as you would do in rugby. Uh, do, do you want to go over a few of those finer technical uh, you know, those, those, those details. Because yeah, yeah, like, sure. the line of scrimmage, mate, could be a scrum, but it's completely different, mate. And people will get that perception. Ah, it's pretty much sure. the same. It's not. Go over those, mate, because I'm fascinated. Absolutely. Well, I, I think one of the hardest things to kind of come to terms with oh, at the beginning was the, the handoff. So, you know, in, in American football, the handoff is the exchange between the quarterback and the running back or the quarterback and whoever's basically running the play. And then in rugby, a handoff is, you know, you're stiff and like a stiff arm in American football. So right. handoff in American football and then in rugby, that's a handoff. And then you've got other things, um, like obviously the route tree, just learning through, learning through some of those. And then it was just, there is just so much else, like in American football, like you're probably not going to jump cut, like even cut, that's that's another word. Like in rugby, you say step, you're going side to side. And in okay. American football, you're saying cut. And then like just the way you move your body, the way, the way you manipulate your hips and the way you basically try and fool a defender in, um, in American football is so different to how you will fool a defender in rugby because more so in rugby, the defence have more to think about because you can kick, you can run, you can pass. In American football, you're just running. You're going to cut somebody, you're going to jump, you're going to hurdle them, whatever it is. But it's more, it's a lot, it, you have basically, because there's a lot less for you to be able to do, right. you have to be a lot better at the only thing that you can do. And That's you have to be so much more agile in that sort of sports. I remember my first, when I first actually started playing the game, for me, it was difficult because I was, I wasn't as flexible. I still had kind of rugby hips and the way I'd basically been taught was different to American football because I guess in rugby, you can get away with not being as agile, but in, in American football, and like a lot of the, a lot of the exercises we do are with ladders, cones and whatnot. So you really have to just force yourself to be a hell of a lot more agile because you can't get away from it, especially in my position. So I'm going to make up a word here, Tyrese. So there's more dissimilarities <laughs> to the two yeah, games literally. balancing them out than there Honestly. is in that finer detail, mate. Is that sort of what you're saying? It's a complete adjustment almost. Very much so. I think when you look at it, you know, from, from the naked eye, one would probably assume that they are quite similar. Like when I first started the sport, I was thinking to myself, this is going to be so easy. They're so similar. The transition is going to be amazing. But pardon me, but, but then actually like being in the sport itself yeah. and, you know, really learning. Because I think you, you, can be a, you can be an American football player and play rugby for sure. But then if you want to be elite 
and you really want to be the best at what you do, especially as a running back, especially as a receiver, where you know your agility is a hell of a lot more under pressure um, sure. than some other positions. You really have to get out of some bad habits. Like if you want to be mediocre, then fine, you can get away with it. But again, if you want to be the best, if you want to be elite, then it's the fine details that are really going to you know help and be the difference. So initially, um, t tell us about the the Oakham school uh going back to you know your teenage life yeah. uh t tell us a little bit like uh, about that because that's just down the road from uh, where i was raised mate beautiful part of the country no really whereabouts were you raised uh well i was born in derby and i was raised in nottingham so there's a clash of the oh, that's types very, that's very close. Yeah. i know <laughs> that's, that's crazy yeah well yeah. i guess you know I was, I was living in dubai and Mum and I were basically thinking to my, ourselves, you know, we've done done pretty well in sport and we kind of got to a point where Dubai was, it could only take me so far in regards to my sport because, you know, for the sports that I wanted to play, it was football, it was rugby, as in actual soccer, <laughs> rugby, right. and then a little bit of athletics. Sure. If you want to play for the best teams in, in the world, you kind of have to go to England. So we thought, you know, let's have a look at some schools. And we managed to speak to Oakham, who were willing to, you know, give me a scholarship. And from there, it was so hard to turn back. It was so hard to say no to because right. to have an opportunity of going to a boarding school or just a private school in itself, where a lot of my family haven't had that experience, right. it was, again, so hard to say no to. It was just, it was a great experience. It really taught me a lot about myself. It stood a lot of discipline because I think when I was younger, I needed discipline. So I definitely installed a bit of discipline into me. And it just basically, it was a great foundation to set me up into, you know, my, my later life, even though I'm not old, I'm not old, I'm young. I'm really, really young. But no, mate, you're not, no. <laughs> it's at least helped, you know, set me up now to be focused have to, like be able to create schedules create timetables because those are the things that they really ingrained into us from a young age so going to a boarding school is one of the best things i've ever done and it looks a little bit we've not got all the photos but i do know it well it's a bit like harry potter isn't it mate you know yeah <laughs> that's, that's what some people say hey, did, did, did they still wear the uniforms with like the blazer and the ties mate are they still doing that yeah, we have blazers, ties, all the ties are for different houses. Um, the girls have really, really long skirts. So it's just, it's very much like a whole world sort of setting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's brilliant. And hey, predominantly, um, uh, just touch on um, your sprinting. Uh, I was a sprinter and I'm going to touch base on that with you a bit later, mate. I've got to do it. We've got to do a challenge. You better be quick out the blocks. Uh, but uh, to, to, <laughs> tell us about your sprinting because um, I know you're pretty quick, mate. I tried to be. Thank you. Know, I tried to be. I guess, you know, me being a sprinter is something. Well, I guess when I was in Dubai, I don't remember, you know, I was playing rugby, I was playing football. Yeah. But then one of the coaches had basically said, why don't you try rugby? No, not my rugby. Why don't you try athletics? Why don't you just run on the track? Sure. And I was about 13 at the time. So then I ran on the track and then I ran 11-8. And then they were like, we think you're a hell of a lot faster. Come again next week. So then I ran again, and I saw warm up, and then I ran an 11-1. And then I remember them saying that you do realise that when you, if you go to England, this was before I decided to go to, to Oakham, they were like, you do realise before you go to England, you could be the top three fastest person in the country. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe I need to just give it a go. Maybe I need to try athletics. I got to England, and I was I was running for a tr I was running for a club full time. Sure. And in the summer, when I basically moved back in 2013, and it was so difficult because I was I was coming back from an injury. But when you're young, you can just run through injuries. <laughs> it was obviously not now anymore, but I had a couple of injuries that was really holding me back, and it was just crazy because i kept losing to this one person i just couldn't beat them like, <laughs> i would literally train all day every day i couldn't beat them and right. i was i wasn't i ended up running from i ended up running probably the top three fastest to ended up being probably top 20 top 30 so i'm thinking to myself maybe i just got overhyped so mentally that was difficult because i'm because i'd basically been bigged up i'd basically been told how great i would be and then i, I didn't deliver but then I remember the next year I said to myself, you know, I said to my coach, um, I had a coach at Oakham called Joel Trapp. And, you know, I said to him, I want to be the fastest in the country this year. And so what we did, you know, we really got into the lab. We worked really hard in the gym. Right. You know, 
I had a rugby season, so even the rugby season, I was still doing some sprint training. And then as soon as it hit January, I just went full out. And in my first race of the season, I ran 11.3. And this was when I was 14, so about 2014. And that, that put me at the first in the country at the time. And then races kept going. I was still unbeaten, still unbeaten. And then all of it had basically led to English schools. So that was one of the finals um, of all of the best athletes and in most schools that run that do athletics nice. and i remember you know I, I, I just kept winning my races keep going kept going through the heats you know just kept getting faster and faster and faster and i ran a 10 on one which at the time put Oof. me at the top i was the second fastest at the time now i'm third fastest 15 year old of all time and it was just a crazy journey because I was so down, but to finish the season on a high was something for me that I felt that was probably my best sporting moment. But yeah, just I mean, it's it's difficult to be like a track sprinter, like like a track runner, a hundred meter runner, whilst doing rugby because yeah. in rugby you need to bulk up a little bit. You have to better take hits, and as soon as you jump back on the track, your body just can't handle it as much. Right. So. It, it has been difficult, and that's why, when as I got older, I've had to kind of push back on the track a little bit. But I've had so much fun doing track. Track was probably one of the best experiences in my life. So we've got three, 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 uh, three sporting uh, scenarios there, mate, which you uh, excel at. I'm jealous. Sorry. I'm honest, mate. I'm jealous. Fantastic, <laughs> mate. Um, so you're quick on the track. Try to be. You're quick, yeah. You, you you you're quick uh and 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 strong and aggressive in 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 your rugby career and you're doing the same thing in um uh your nfl well uh, your, your college football career sure. we've already gone through the rugby and uh, you know the finer details of rugby and uh, american football uh do you change your style in running as well when 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 you've got the ball because getting out of the blocks running in a straight line or 200 meters around the bend mate you know you've got a, that's technical as well do you change it up a little bit because then all the three mash together you know um i'd say yes subconsciously i do in american football i'm a hell of a lot more elusive than i'm in other sports because in oh. rugby because there are so many more ways to beat a man you know, you can, like like I was saying a little bit earlier, you know, you can kick it, you can party, you can dummy. So you have more ways of, of confusing the defender without actually running as fast. Okay. And because there are so many more things that could be available, like you could be running into contact, but somebody could be open in rugby where you're looking, you're looking to create a two-on-one or you're looking to create a mismatch or whatever it is or looking for other opportunities. But in American football, I know that as soon as I've got the ball, I just gotta get as many yards as I can. So I'm literally put I probably run a hell of a lot more aggressive in American football because I'm just trying to I'm trying to get trying to get to the line. I'm trying I'm just trying to get as far as I can before somebody hits me. Or if they do hit me, I'm just trying to run through them. Right. And then in athletics, I'm just running in a straight line. So it's all technique. So I guess all of them together just require a different sort of running style. And I definitely say that athletics is probably the hardest personally because it's just technique and i've always struggled sure. with technique and i had I had some really good coaches that really helped me but definitely athletics is the hardest because you know you're not just running it's the hard training that you have to do to make the running the second nature but then in other sports i guess you can think about it a little bit more you know you don't have to run as as straight you can push people to a side to manipulate their bodies and go the other way whatever it is it's just, yes, yeah, it, it, they all require different sorts of running techniques. Combining all those together, and obviously you've made your, made your choices into uh, Streamline, and uh, you're, um, you're coming back here into the US. Your mental approach of this is uh, you're physically strong, you're passionate, you're dedicated, you have a strong approach mentally as well. What has helped you build from, you're still young, mate, uh, that that young age of 13, 14, 15, Dubai to Oakham to the States to rugby to football. Mm -hmm. What what are the foundations of your strength of character and your emotions, Tyrese, if you don't mind me asking? Sure. I'd say I'd say um, you know, I know the path I could have gone down, but I'm very blessed that, you know, my mum has basically sacrificed everything to make opportunities for myself. 
And Charis, yeah. give your mum a wave. You've got to give your mum a wave, mate. Give your mum a wave. There you go. <laughs> Mums are great. Mums are great. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I interrupted. Go ahead. No worries. Um, I guess, you know, with my mum basically sacrificing a hell of a lot, seeing her struggle and, you know, seeing, being, wanting to kind of be the one to help my family, you know, be successful, at least get, you know, at least, at least be that driving factor to bring some form of wealth to my family and create that generational wealth. I just can't stop because at the end of the day, I feel as if God has given me a purpose and my family has given me a purpose. So for me to not try to be the best, I'd be failing God, I'd be failing my family. So for me, every single day, I just feel as if I have to get better at something. Every single, every single week, every single year, I have to get better at something because if I'm not getting better, then again, I'm wasting people's time. And as much as I wanna say that I do it for myself, I'm a man of God and I love my family. So I very much have to put in every little bit of hard work on and off the field to make sure that, you know, I'm making, I'm making the right decisions and I'm learning what I need to learn because a lot of people jump on the field and they just expect to get better. But it's being a student of game of the game, which really re takes you to another level. And sure. what I've learned now that I've been playing sport for such a long time, you have to love what you do. And because I love what I do as well, doing all of that together, I just want to get better. And I just have that in, in the drive, in the hunger, whatever you want to call it. But I guess, yeah, it's very hard to stop. And, and at the same time, Tyrese, uh, uh, I do be as professional as I can with my research and stuff like that. And we've had several conversations yeah. over many months now. And uh, yeah. you're a genuine, honest, fine young man. And uh, yeah. you're a pleasure to know. We do have a little clip, which I do think sums up your whole persona of, hey, if I, if I do get hit, if I do get tackled, if I do yeah. go down, Stop me if I'm wrong. I'm getting back up again because I ain't Always. staying down. Absolutely. And I don't know if our um, uh, my Mr. Spielberg could actually run a clip. If we get cut off, it's because the clip's going to come on. Which it's Tony Johnson Fisher. Tony yeah, Johnson Fisher. It's been a crazy couple of years. Rugby, track, and American football. I love. I left America to come back to. Freshman at this time, and I learned a hell of a lot. But to be who I am, I feel like I can be who I am now. America, I'm coming. Second chance. This is my home. I thank all those. With that being said, I will be committing to going to the college. Just that brief clip, and Anthony did a great job in getting that in. Just sums you up totally. Um, Thank you. And uh, just explain how you felt when you were just making that little uh, little YouTube, because I do know that you and I connected with Koi Sports and the power of five uh, and that, you know, that mental awareness and putting that out. Just uh, just give us a recap on your feelings through that and, and, and what you want to deliver, maybe spiritually as well as personally to, to that younger generation. <laughs> Younger than you coming through that, and certainly younger than me. Just, just give us those emotions and feelings, if you don't mind, Tyrese. Absolutely. Well, I think the most important thing that I said in the whole of the video was, I feel as if this is greater than myself. So I feel as if you know I have a duty to be as good as I can be, because you know people, people that obviously are moving to American football now, it's it's very much of a nuance to people because in the UK, it's not necessarily a sport that's as popular as some other sports. So I feel as if like when I play the sport and I try to get better, I'm, help I'm helping to make other guys better as well. I also feel as if, you know, for the younger generation, I go to schools, I speak to schools because I feel as if it's my duty, it's my purpose to at least help people know that there's a way out. And just because life hasn't always been great for some people, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. I know it's a cliche, but people say cliches are usually true. So, you know, with that video, I just felt as if I needed to put my message out to people to know that I'm 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 leaving rugby, I'm going to American football, and the decision that I'm gonna make, the decision to go to, you know, junior college is the best decision for myself because I just feel as if I've been out of the game, you know, for quite a while now. And 
I need to be in a situation where I can just learn. Because as a football player, as an athlete, especially being so new to the game, more a lot, a lot of the time, most of us, we need to just sit down and just learn. So I felt as if, you know, that video was great and at least enticing people to at least follow my journey a little bit and to get a bit of an understanding sure. that, you know, I, I didn't get fired from Bristol Bears or whatever people thought, you know, I, I left because I wanted to do American football. And I feel as if now is a good time to just put it out there and, you know, again, show the youth that if you want to do something, then the only person that can do it is yourself and the only person holding yourself back is yourself. So I just wanted to kind of touch on those sorts of things when I've created the video. And your involvement with the Power of Five as well, which uh, we'll talk about over the next few months, mate. And uh, when you get out here or I manage to get back to the UK, we'll discuss a few of those options. But for the viewers out there, uh, what Tyrese does behind the scenes is uh, tremendous for uh, the schools and the mental awareness and, 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 and the build-up of that. And uh, it, it is commendable. Tyrese, I'm not going to take up uh, a lot more of your time because I know I know the traffic killed you coming across London, <laughs> mate, and you're ready for a bit of supper. So, uh, but I can't let you go without a couple of things. I do ask people that you know the quick fire five questions, and um, so I'm I'm going to throw those uh, out at you. Um, your uh, your favourite American football player, mate, Le'Veon Bell. Straight, nice and Fair easy. Those. Nice and easy. <laughs> what what's he got that you like, then, mate? So when I first started playing playing football, I had to learn the game, and who do I had to learn learn the game from? A running back that I want to model my game after. So watching him, so patient on the ball, and he just has such a great awareness and intelligence of the every situation that he's in. It's just like when you watch certain players that are that good. It's like poetry in motion. So that's why I love your bell is my favourite. That's not like, bad. Running back uh, or my football player. That's not bad. Uh, all right. Uh, second question. Uh, rugby player that you admire, past or, or, or present, mate? Favourite? Ooh. Christian Wade. It has to be Christian Wade because, you know, as a winger, you need yeah. to obviously have somebody who you want to model your game after. And he was just so elusive, so intelligent. Again, like... Those sorts of players, just poetry and motion. You see, you know, what you see isn't what they see. They they make things for themselves. They're very patient. And when the opportunity's there, they execute. Three similar, uh, similar questions. Okay. So you, you stood at the starting line. Yeah. And it's on your marks. Get set. Pick an arena that you'd like to uh, blast out of the blocks anywhere across the planet. Let's say it's an Olympic final. Where would that arena be, mate? Pressure's on. If I was, if I was a track athlete. Yeah, hundred meters, mate. You're you're there. You're lined up. Let's say, let's say all the best are in there and uh, whatever. You got Usain in there and Linford from way back when, mate. You know, oh, and you're there. <laughs> yeah, go, right. we got a big um, su superstar, mate. So you're there. Hundred meters final. Don't matter what Olympics, whatever world championship. What arena would give you a bit of a buzz, mate? So I ran at the Olympic Stadium, and that was crazy. So I think. If I was a great athlete and running at the home that out of the home stadium with not doing obviously not doing relay and being just a full out 100 meter runner, it would have to be the Olympic Stadium, the home crowd and everybody shouting your name. Like yeah, it'd be difficult to not not choose the Olympic Stadium. I was going to say home turf, mate. That, that that'd be a right buzz, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. <laughs> So uh, let's let's uh, stay stay with those stadiums. I'm going to do uh, rugby right now. Rugby stadium across the planet. You're running out there. Any team you like doesn't matter. Rugby stadium, mate. Twickenham when it's full. That's I'm, home turf in. again, mate. Right. Home turf. That's it. Cause you got your home fans. S -s Swing low, sweet chariot. There we go. Swing low, sweet chariot. Swing low, sweet chariot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I can go with that. Um, yeah. So let, let, let's say um, down the road, uh, let's say you get a pop at the NFL, um, which would be great in itself. Um, what, what, um, what, what, what 
what stadium would you like to play in over here? Uh, you know, uh, in the NFL, mate. Everything is so nice. Or yeah, or or a particular team you're running out there for that team on their home turf because we've done home turf quite a bit, mate. So I like the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Mercedes Benz Stadium is beautiful. I, it's yeah, it's a great. I, I, when, I, when I play when I play on Madden, and you know where <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful stadium. All of them are so beautiful. They just yeah, probably Mercedes Benz. That's probably my favorite stadium. Yeah, they're uh, they're all pretty good out here. They perfectly reasonable to hold her uh, i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna give them a plug for uh, uh the world cup they're perfectly uh, they, they could yeah. hold, uh, host the world cup here anyway for soccer rugby anything so uh i normally do a hat trick of thank you so thank you thank you thank you tyrese uh, i know you need to get something yeah. to eat uh totally appreciate your time would you like to leave our viewers and listeners uh just a final message on the strength and character that you have within your inner self and i'll say cheerio to you mate and thank you very much well thank you very much for having me i just i have one saying one saying only be consistent at being persistent like i just want to be the best and i try to do everything that i can in order to do that and i know i'm so far off but I know for myself, I'm not going to stop pushing. So, you know, everyone that's in my circle, we all try to be better. We all, every single day, we try to, you know, critique each other to make sure we're getting the very best out of every single day, very much, every very best out of life as well. So just to everybody, you know, it's crazy time right now, but I guess all we can do, all one can do is be positive, be strong, and just basically try and be better every single day.